Hello and welcome to MGP 362. I'm Kevin. With me this week, this Sheepdog Anna and Pab. Say hello, boys and girls. Hello. How's it going? Hello. How's it going? <laughs> That's <laughs> new. Is that is that your new way of saying hello? Yes. I like it. It's very, very uh, urban and street. It's very cool. Yeah. In it. Um, this is our Game of the Decade episode, everybody, so let's just get that in early. Let's brace everybody for what's about to happen. Um, very soon, we're going to get into discussing the best video game of the last decade, and uh, it will be official. We will decide it. There might be the opportunity to let you lot have a little vote as well, but more importantly, we're going to tell you what the best game of the decade is. The four of us will be in complete agreement by the end of this podcast on what the best game of the last 10 years was. But on that note, if anybody wants to get involved in the social media side of things and try and explain to us that it's not the end of the decade, you're going to get blocked straight away. We're not having any of that nonsense around here. Have you been seeing that all over the internet? From no. specky little know-it-alls? Uh, well, actually, I think, I think you'll find a decade is described thusly and we have one more year to go. You see, yeah, thusly. Oh, I yeah. want to talk to exactly. the thusly person. If you, <laughs> it was one oh to one nine, job done. Yeah, exactly. This this is the end of the decade. If you disagree, there are lesser podcasts out there you could go and listen to who may agree with your twisted point of view. Go and listen to those. I'm um, talking of podcast names, by the way. I'm springing this on everybody, you three included as well. I've changed the name of the podcast on iTunes and stuff again. <laughs> So, okay. How are you telling us this during the episode? Because <laughs> I've just remembered. I've removed the bit that mentions TV and comics. Oh, and movies fair enough. Because we don't do it. So it's now MGP, the Mature Gamer Podcast. So you can now actually search for it both ways, finally. The reason I did it, the amount of people saying, Kev, I've searched for the Mature Gamer Podcast on Spotify or on iTunes, and I can't find it. Anyway, because it didn't show up if you typed the Mature Gamer Podcast, because <laughs> that wasn't anywhere in the name. But now it will so- show up either way, whether you type MGP or Mature Gamer Podcast, finally, it will actually show up wherever That's you get your That's quite useful, because I only from. ever introduce it as... It's called MGP, but it was the Mature Gamer Podcast, and uh, it all gets a bit confused, uh, confusing and weird. Um, but no, thanks for when... running out buyers first. Yeah, you know. Um, it, I've also made it so that it's no longer by maturegamerpodcast.com. That's been removed as well, because obviously <laughs> that website is just riddled with porn and is nothing to do with us anymore. Um, so that's gone as well. So I think it should, when the new podcast comes out, just now say Kev, Steve, Anna and Pab, uh, which is what the blurb has said for the last however many years. I've just cop- I did a copy and paste job. Well, I'm actually on there now because for years I wasn't on there. You were on there. You, you were. Been on there a lot longer than Pab was. Yeah, you've mm. been on there since like straight away, I think. Mm. Yeah, it just was, a it long time. Steve Anna and Bouncy, and Pab's been here forever. Yeah, Pab's been here longer than me and Sheepdog have. Probably now. Yeah, really. Exactly. He's put in. He's certainly put more hours of work into this than we ever have. Let's not forget those episodes where he wasn't here, but he was sat at home filling in the gaps on his own. He sent us all those filling recordings. in competition entries to try and win that PlayStation as well. Yeah, yeah, he's, he's a monster. Um, it's it's been a couple of weeks since we last did a podcast. Um, Indeed, Sheepdog was skiving off last week, and it was all his fault that we didn't record. Um, it was nothing to do with me being poorly. It's I'm quite still ironic, I... actually. I've fallen ill in the past like hour, <laughs> so now I'm really holding Are you in allergic any snips to the podcast. Cost. Um, no, I ended up moving some boxes and stuff for my kids, and there's so much dust involved on top of my son's wardrobe that um, I just feel really rough now. I don't know how many decade-old germs <laughs> I've, I've probably <laughs> breathed in every decade from the every decade every germ from the past decade, and they're currently all fighting out to see which one's best and uh, kill well, me. I assume they'll eliminate but, each other. Yeah. Hope, yeah, but the one that some kind of eliminates them there. all will probably take me down afterwards. If there was one that eliminated them all, then we'd all be dead. There's some kind of clever rock, paper, scissors thing that's allowed all humanity to survive. And as long as you have got every germ in there, you're all good. Well, at the moment, I'm I've sure got ale science works. to fight half of them. And once I've finished the last inch of ale in this glass, I've got a gin right behind it, which is hopefully going to take out the rest. So, fingers crossed. But... um yeah. Medicinal sheep dogging. You just need Thanks. to sneeze it out. To Not what? On the show though. Sneeze it out. Well, I tried to do that pre-show. You probably heard, but um, he was taking yeah. his snuff. I'm gonna <laughs> just drink it away. <laughs> He's gonna drink his snot away. <laughs> 
And what yeah. I was leading into there before Sheepdog's Tales of Snot was, um, has anything, have we had any exciting tales happen over Christmas and the holiday period? Did we all get what we wanted from Santa? Anna, you got a shiny new toy that's actually gaming related. It is. Feel free to tell people what it was. I got VR. Which VR did you get, Anna? I got PlayStation VR. Yeah, I didn't get computer VR because that would that sounds like a lot of faff that I I don't want to mess with. But yeah, I got a PlayStation that comes with a camera and a fancy headset. I just need now to find them stick things. I have one, but I want two. The move and controllers. They're super expensive. This like they're stupidly expensive. I don't know how people are charging over a hundred pound for move. Probably but... because lots of people got PlayStation VR for Christmas yeah. and are now forcing the price of the controllers up. Yeah, but I got this when they came out on like on the PlayStation Three. So yeah, I don't know how they get away with it, but yeah. So Do you I feel like I'm sat demand. in your living room with it on, knowing that everyone else in the room can see you, but you can't see them? Can't I? Couldn't care. But Don't you live with like... Kev, so who knows? What <laughs> I've only happen. snuck up on her a couple of times. Yeah, the next time wrong? she's playing it, you should empty the house out. <coughs> yeah, but she, like... she refuses to play with the earbuds in. Yeah. Um, I so don't she like still has them. the volume out of the telly, so she's not completely immersed in it. If she had the earbuds on as well and was completely shut off from the rest of the world, no, I'd move I have her. To know, I have to know where Dave is. <laughs> I have to know where Andy is. I have to know where you are. Because exactly. you, all, you all just move around. And I have to know what you're doing. I'd have her glued to the ceiling if she had the earbuds in as well. It'd like, the, the earbuds, like, I've put them in very, re, like, very quickly. They they sound great, but I, I don't like things that are going in, in. The, ugh, the feeling just makes me want to vomit. I have to have, like, like ones that just sit in your ear, not go in your ear. Because <laughs> it makes me want to, like, peel off my own skin. Oof, can't stand it. But, um... <laughs> I've got, I've got, I've got, I have got the wireless headphones, but I don't know if they work while using that. So I'll have to test that because I haven't. Very PlayStation them. on brand if you have the headset and the headphones. All PlayStation branded, all white well, with pa- the glowing they're, blue yeah, bits. <laughs> they're, they're supposed to fit over it because so, I've got version two, not the first one. Um, yeah, and I can wear it with glasses. Um, except. When I get warm in there, my glasses steam up, which make... That's not a thing. Don't... It is a thing, which makes the I'm not the wearing my glasses inside. right now for that reason. Makes You're not wearing a virtual reality up. headset. <laughs> it gets very Glasses warm do not there. spontaneously steam up, and yes, I won't have anyone do. tell me otherwise. They really, they do. really do. Like, when you go, when you're outside... Are you you're, I think Sheepdog's nostrils are on upside down. No. <laughs> no, I think the they same. just stopped doing something with glasses at Specsavers. Um, this past year, and it's ruined me. But I can't afford to replace them, so I'm stuck. And Anna's obviously experiencing the same problem. Yeah, mm. I hate it. It's so annoying, all the time. Every every I time I get a bit as warm a, outside, or as a non glasses steamer needs to go in this headset and see if I get steamed up to see if it's real. I mean, I I believe the coming inside from being cold outside, that's just physics. But sitting there, minding your own business, and all of a sudden you know, start to steam up, I don't <laughs> believe that's a thing. Yes, it is. How can it not be a thing if it's happening? Because it only happens to sheepdog. It happens to me. Uh, when you've got a headset on, I imagine you're, you're blowing air up the headset somehow. Like you're, you're breathing out of your nose but into no, the headset and it's no, circulating the air around it, somehow. No, it doesn't work that way. But you won't have it on because you're scared of it for some reason. Because I get really bad motion sickness. I went on the um, the Ratatouille ride at Disneyland oh, a couple of weeks ago, and we nearly thing. had to come home because I thought I was going to vomit. I genuinely, so from that funny. moment for the next two hours after we were on that ride, all I wanted to do was come home because I felt so sick. So oh God, I don't want to ruin don't get, my Christmas. If if you don't get motion sickness, that ride is great. Like, as soon as we went in, Kevin was like, wow. I was like, yeah, it yeah. was awesome until it was vomit inducing <laughs> horrible. What did you do? Just, like, whiz around? It moves it moves you around in a little car like a normal, like, but not Disney on ride type thing. But then all of a sudden, the car will stop and it will... It, it, you're wearing 3D glasses and it has these big screens that kind of surround you. And it starts to simulate you moving around. 
for a little bit and it's those it's those bits as soon as the car itself stops moving and it just becomes the 3d effect of us supposedly moving around i just wanted to throw up i wanted to get off it was horrible oh it was fantastic it was like being in the back of a taxi on the way out of birmingham with a stein glass on my lap (laughs) god you're a bigger pansy than me i think that makes it official I can't no, speak. I think, that was really jolted, that sentence. I think we both need to go to Disneyland. We'll go tomorrow and we'll see who can last, who can do the most <laughs> laps on Ratatouille before we vomit. <laughs> that sounds like that, a great video. That um, would be I a went great on video. there in the Dino Land bit in America. They have one that just jolts at right angles, just like really forcefully. Um, I went on it to test it to see if my mother in law could go on it, and we told her no because it would break all her hips and bones and stuff. <laughs> all of her hips. <laughs> <laughs> it will break all of your hips. Wow. Yeah. But it was horrific. Um, I went on loads of stuff like that. So, yeah, I reckon I'd probably give you a I don't mind me. violently being hurled around. It was just the, the the motion sickness side of it was horrible. Mm. <laughs> to be fair, I, I get motion else... sick when machines don't do what I want. And I was going to segue there because I knew you were about to say, did anyone else have any stories? Um, I, I spent... going to ask if anyone else got any gaming toys for Christmas. Mr. Well, Howie yeah. Too. Yeah, yeah, gaming. Um, so I got... Pokemon uh, Sword and Shield for me and Ollie at Christmas and um, I mean Christmas was what three days ago and he's played something like 16 hours on this um, they're that's... rookie numbers Anna I know <laughs> I know but we're trying to keep him from playing it too much so that's what five hours a day um, have you got I'm the parental on... tracking on there then to get those numbers or is that just 16 hours into the game on his save, so when he, I get him to save it to see how long he's been on there because I forgot I could. Because so the parental tracking thing is fascinating. Anna has all the reports through to her phone to see what Andy's doing on his new switch light. Yep. and um, he's it's scary some of the numbers <laughs> that he's run up so far. Um, how many hours total has he got on Goat Simulator? In th- and bear in mind he got his on Boxing Day because we're running so a day behind humanity. Thursday was eight hours and forty-five minutes. Wow. Friday was seven hours, and today's five hours fifteen. To be fair, yeah. The, they're proper the, numbers. The five hours a day, though, that is then him coming off that and playing a bit of um, Monster Legends, a game he keeps playing on the on the phone and Pokemon Go and watching whatever. You know, it, I think much... what we've established here for anyone listening is that we're all great parents. Yeah. It's not that, but it it's new, isn't it? it I'd be the same if I had something new. Like, it's... Oh, yeah. I mean, to be fair, Anna has... Spent nearly thirty hours on her VR since, since no, Thursday I as well. Don't lie. I when I had a big session on it yesterday afternoon for f- two hours maybe, but that's about it because it it it, it I, I have to make sure everything is right in the house before I put it on. <laughs> I have to make sure Kevin sat down doing something. Make sure Andy's <laughs> doing something, <laughs> and then make sure nobody is around me. And then I'm fine. But So I was going to say that um, I'd set them both up, both the games and everything, and we were kind of in this, going in the same direction for the first, like, however long of the game, because it's quite on the rails, isn't it? And uh, the second we were into the wild area and we could start trying to raid, I was trying to set that up. And it kept telling me that it, it could recognise that Ollie was local to me, but it wouldn't let me like link with him or anything it would it would just tell me that he'd done a raid or he'd caught something and i was trying to get us to do a raid together and it kept just saying connection error I kept putting the code in online it kept saying there might be an issue with our router or something but i was thinking it can't be it's recognizing us so uh, we're trying to do trades I, I started checking whether he could he could do battles um local but then if i tried to go online it said he needed a nintendo um a nintendo online account so i thought okay i'll do him a, a three quid month version of it just to get it working he'll be fed up with it in a month i spent probably an hour and a half trying to figure out what the hell the problem was with this on uh, sort of midday on christmas day to the point where it was making me feel really dizzy because it just wasn't working and i couldn't get my head around it so i think just the frustration of it not working was just making me feel sick um i didn't figure it out so in the end we just left it and i carried on playing by that point he was hours ahead of me because he'd been playing it and i'd kept 
just reading solutions coming back and thinking I'd got it um, and then Boxing Day we did the same thing he just really wanted to do a trade and it wouldn't let us and I was faffing around at this point I had like rebooted my dad's router and fixed his router um, I had you know just set up his Wi-Fi again I'd you know, updated the switch and updated the games I'd done all sorts of nonsense and then I was on Reddit looking at people's questions on there and somebody had said, described the exact same issue that they tried everything, they'd done this, they'd done that. And I read through their massive essay that they'd written. And I'm, re- I'm thinking back, I'm a bit annoyed with them for this, but they'd written probably a thousand words on what the problem was and what they tried. And then right at the bottom, they'd put edit, just realised he blocked me. And when I went on Ollie's and he'd blocked me by mistake at one point or another in all of our handovers and everything. Um, and that was why I couldn't play with him on Christmas Day because he'd accidentally pressed a button that meant he'd blocked me from all communications. And once we <laughs> finally fixed that, we'd been able to, you know, raid, trade, all sorts. And it's been great since, but I couldn't believe how much time I burnt on it over Christmas, like serious lengths of time because it was just irritating me that I couldn't figure it out. And, uh, oh, he's a little git. Um, I'm sure it was you know, just a button he'd pressed. I think it's like R to block or something. He must have just pressed it when he was pressing. Do the you other not buttons. have parental controls on it? Then? Well, I, I'm down. I added him as a friend. It's it's in game. It's in Pokemon. You can block other players. So if Kev was I don't know abusing me on there, I could just block him. And then weirdly, it would still try and connect, but it would just tell him it couldn't connect. It yeah, didn't it tell just, me I was blocked. On here, it tells me like he tried to in, uh, put the pin in, and it, try, mm-hmm. it tells me what he tried. Try, he's tried to because I obviously I've locked a, few, a lot of things down, but yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, but I was a bit miffed, and we've had great fun since. Just yeah, trading stuff. I basically sent him all the stuff that needs to be traded to evolve, and then got him to send it back to me. And that's about as far as I'm willing to trade with him until he has something better to trade me. But um, with him being something like five hours ahead of me in the game, we've got the same amount of gym badges, and I have somehow got like 35 more Pokemon than him. So I have no idea what he's been doing in this game other than just running around. Um, he's, he's, he's only a couple of levels higher than me as well so I think he's genuinely just wandering around taking it all in while I've just been kind of grinding through it I might as well just have a steamroller going over Pokemon at the moment um, but yeah we're both having fun in our own ways but it's been cracking Splendid and Pab what did Santa Claus bring you? Did you get a gaming present? Uh, did I get a gaming present? That's a good question I don't think I did I mean it's one you could have prepared for for the last 15 minutes while the rest of us were talking about it <laughs> I've been sat here just Nothing about. I, I have not got anything. I've just got, been playing my new game, but other no, than that, I, can't I haven't got anything. Any, anything gaming related. I did get a new comic book. This is. It's not. We don't do comic books anymore. I'm not going to mention what even what it is. Um, well, that's extreme. Not doing comics. Good work. Yeah. Dad. So You're taking the my, name change seriously. My mum got me a a comic book. Um, it was a. Was it? I think it was My Hero Academia. I was like, okay, great. And it is volume 22 of My nice. Hero Academia. <laughs> so you've not read the other 21. I said, He's bought not, the other 21. I said, I've not read any of them. What, <laughs> should, should I got it? Because it came out on the 20th, and I said, it, I knew you won't have a chance to buy it. <coughs> so I've now got a volume 22 of <laughs> My Hero <laughs> Academia. I, the, the, the sentiment was there, but I was like, I don't know what I'm going to do with this now. I think you need to buy the other 21. I know, I, I feel like obliged to to, what, to read all 22 volumes of My Hero Academia now. By They're next week's show. There'll be like a thing in 10 years where I'll say, yeah, 22 was really the jumping on point for a lot of people. Yeah. Get really yeah. good numbers that Christmas and that may really made the whole whole series. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, nothing yeah. gaming related. Right, should we get into this uh, game of the decade thing then? One We've... thing we didn't do, Kev. What? what? You both said something to me at the same time. Santa did bring me something. Um, he got me uh, at some listening devices for my telephone. <laughs> yeah, and now she'll never know. I mean, so, she, uh, t- I'll level with you all. She was involved in the process. She already knows what Santa brought me. While she she's fixing what whatever it is that's broken. No, I fi- I'm okay. fixed. Uh, th- I don't know what's happened, but it's fixed um, now. We did forget to acknowledge, and I know you said not to. It, well, you haven't played anything related to it Kev but um, the listeners I feel made a mistake on their game of the year did you see the results at all I haven't even looked at what the result was yeah so 
Yeah, I also control. haven't. Uh, yeah, none, none of us played any of the games we promised to play, yeah. so none of us can really judge, which is why we didn't judge at the time. <laughs> well, yeah, good point. But Control came fourth with eleven percent. Pokemon Sword and Shield came third with twenty four percent. Mario Maker two came third. Uh, sorry, second with thirty percent, and the Outer Worlds one with thirty five percent. Well, there's even more reason to go and play the Outer Worlds then, nah. which we were all supposed to do before this <laughs> show, and none of us did. So we're going to honour their their decision for once, or are we going to tell them? Yeah, that no, we'll uh, we'll announce it in like March when we've got nothing else going on, and we actually get round <laughs> to playing those games. I'm looking forward because to they are sat out. there. They, they all the options in the top four. I have them all available to me, but I've still only played the two that I'd played two weeks ago because it's been a busy couple of weeks. This time two weeks ago when we were recording, I was secret halfway through that show i got notification that the secret trip to disneyland paris that i've been planning for anna was in jeopardy because of train strikes so halfway <laughs> through that show anyone who was listening in great detail would have noticed me go from really engaged in the podcast to <laughs> just basically shutting off completely because i got an email through saying your train's cancelled and i'm you, desperately trying to think of an alternative you did say something um at the end something like woman we need to talk and then yeah, that's when, that's when I told her about the trip <laughs> yeah. and said, look, I've been planning this surprise. It's all gone wrong. Help me. Because <laughs> that really, I went to bed thinking, I wonder what he needed to talk about because that sounded serious, but not like my dad's ill serious. It was more like, I can't, I don't want to bring it up right now. But I don't know what to say. I'll be in in a minute kind of thing. I sat um, there all Saturday morning just on the sofa having a meltdown spending money left right and center and then asking people for refunds i booked taxi transfers i hired cars i did everything you could possibly imagine and then anna told me what i should do and we had it all planned perfectly only to find <laughs> that the flights then got cancelled the night before anyway so we ended up driving anyway yeah that but, was uh, i thought yeah. your flights being cancelled was the thing i didn't know it was literally all those other things Oh, everything yeah, went it wrong. Was, it was, and it was all to do with these strikes in France. Basically, the original plan, we were going to fly in on the Tuesday, fly in Tuesday morning, jump on the train transfer. It's like a 10-minute train transfer from the airport to the park. And then, the end of the day, train back to the to the planes and fly home again. But then I got the email saying the trains were none of the trains were running because of the strikes. And taxi transfers were like 90 minutes and wanted to pick us up at half past four and it basically i sat there saturday morning <laughs> and after rebooking being, so we'd get the disney at 11 and yeah so i ended up four. rebooking everything pretty much on the saturday morning cancelled the original flight for the tuesday evening booked a hotel in france right we're now flying back wednesday morning we're gonna hire a car it's all good and then bang they cancelled the flights as well and um, it all went Man. massively <laughs> wrong. But we got there, and that's I'm the important thing. I'm trying to explain it to Claire how you were trying to do it. as like, oh, you've had a really stressful year, and I just want to make you feel better. <laughs> it became even more stressful, <laughs> and I was like, that is just really sad. <laughs> it was just ironic, but sad. Um, no, but you had a but good time. The important time, thing you? is, I got a Captain Marvel beanie hat, so there we go. everyone was happy in the end. Excellent. Yes, it's, it was magical. So... Game of the Decade. If you didn't listen to last week's show or two weeks ago's show, um, then this is all new, a new fancy way of doing things. But yeah. it's it, basically all we're doing. Rather than doing short lists of five like we have done traditionally for our Game of the Year stuff, um, obviously 10 years is a long time. And especially early on in this decade, there was a hell of a lot of very good games that came out. So we've all agreed to do a short list of 10 games each. Um, and then we'll, we'll kind of try and narrow that down to an overall podcast shortlist ideally we want to get it to a final four again because if we can get to a final four it allows us to do the twitter poll um and then we'll kind of once we've got it down to our final four we'll sort of recast our votes at that point so initially we're trying to get our 10 shortlists of 10 down to a group shortlist of a non-specified length a then we're going to try and narrow mean? well yeah well we'll if we end up with right the four of us agree on seven games we'll commit to those seven and then chip away at that to try and get it down to the four once we get to the four we'll then decide on the winner this could be a long and arduous battle or we could all agree who knows but this pretty much covers the life of the podcast plus an extra year or so at the start and the extra year or so at the start was awesome Mm. um who wants to go first and get their get their 10 out there should I have Pab go first? 
think we should. Me? You want me to go first, dear? <laughs> I'd love it. I'd love that noise it is something like a pub. sheep. Me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Don't Stop hurting mean. him, sheepdog. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Pab. What's your, what's, what's okay. your tent? He's yeah. scribbling frantically. Yeah. No, I, I did I that need before. I need a tent. Um, okay, so my first one is The Witcher 3. Okay. Are you making notes? Or... I'm that was literally the one that I didn't think any of us would vote for when I said um, earlier, Pab. If there's anything you want to particularly be passionate about now, you can be. But for now, I think we probably just get our get our tens out and then yeah. start forming a list from there. So The Witcher okay. 3. The Witcher 3. Control. Control. Failed this year, but he's going for it again. <laughs> Do you want me to... Right. What we should have done is gone back and looked at all our previous Game of the Year winners I and made sure they were in consideration. This is, this is what I considered. I could be hey, tactical Pab, Pab, and Pab, I can do... Pab, you do, you do it your way. Yeah. You do you, little fella. I'm not playing tactically. I'm not going for <gasps> well, general Well, then it sounds like things. you're playing to lose, but go on. Pab, we'd attack you if you said the games we'd written and made. Yeah. I know. You, do you know how this show works by now, Pab? Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm just trying to gen- generalise because <laughs> you're right. Control hasn't won this year, but to me it was. And it, they're my games of the year. They're not. Like I say, I've got a list decade, of about thirty decade. games here. That, well, that, that's that, too many, Pab. No, no. What I'm ten. saying is, I've got games that <laughs> I can see would why other people would vote for them to be a game of the decade or even a year. Um. Anyway, my next one is God of War. Okay. Yay! You oh, got well, it. I, continue. I, I have. Th- thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, the next one is Overwatch. Overwatch, eh? Mm-hmm. You're very in the moment, aren't you, Pub? He's got his finger on the pulse. I've got reasons never. for all of these things. If you want to, that's all right. I'm it. glad you've got reasons, Pub. We'll get into them later. What was that noise, <laughs> Kevin? <laughs> Jeez. The uh, next one is Firewatch. Getting all the watch ones out the way. Yeah, watch getting them out the way now. Early. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five. I've done five. Yep. Uh, my next one is Rocket League. Rocket League. Mm-hmm. My word. My word. We're very different people, Pab. Yep. Uh, my next one is The Legend of Zelda and Breath of the Wild. Very different people. Yeah. <laughs> we might need a new Pab. The last, the last three, you will, you will, you'll match up with me. Fairly certain. Let's see. Oh, the next one is The Last of Us. Okay. I'm keeping my cards close to my chest for now. You won't know if we match yet. Uh, <laughs> next one after that is uh, Telltale's Walking Dead. Glad you specified it wasn't the uh, one where we all got stuck at the petrol station. Yeah, no. <laughs> the, the Dixon Brothers one. <laughs> <laughs> oh. um, and finally, to round out your ten, Pab. Fortnite. You think I'm going to be with you on that one? <laughs> I'm keeping. Keep Have you met? You remember off. which one I am, Pab? I'm the tall one. Yeah. <laughs> strange young man. Strange, strange, strange. Um, okay, so to confirm, Pab's top ten: The Witcher Three, Control, God of War, Overwatch, Firewatch, Rocket League, Zelda, Breath of the Wild, or Breath of the Wid. It says on my notes: Last of Us, The Walking Dead, and Fortnite. Splendid stuff. I assume your list is identical, Sheepdog. Do we just skip over you and second all of his votes? <laughs> Do you know, um, there was one on mine that I wasn't sure about whether or not to put it or not. <clears throat> I've been having an hour between The Last of Us and Fez. And I was kind of like, which one did I enjoy more? They're both brilliant. But I'm thinking, just to go completely not connected with Pab, I'm going to put Fez on there as my 10th favourite from the decade because... It was outstanding. Because you're a tactical monster and you want it to be impossible for us to reach a final four. (laughs) Um, My my list isn't in any kind of order other than that. I just, I had Fez. Just as well, because I've written Fez down as your first one. Well, it's not my number one. My number one's obviously... Well, you just said they weren't in any order, Sheepdog. Okay, fine. My number one, the one I think should win, is obviously Pokemon Go. Fez. Pokemon Go. Interesting. Never heard um, of it. You'll have to tell us more about that in a little while. <laughs> yeah, I will at uh, a later date. You don't hear When you write that much. down, by the way, if you're scribbling it down, it just looks like Pokemon Go, which I've never <laughs> realised. <laughs> Pokemon Go. Pokemon Poor Go. old Mongo yeah. <laughs> sat in the zoo that's, getting poked um, all the time. That's what they should have called it. I've never seen it written down by hand before. I like it. Um, 
Now, this was a toss-up as well, but I went for Mass Effect 2, okay. which eked into 2010 by like 25 days. It was it was on my slightly longer shortlist, but it has been crossed out on my original one because there I was, was gonna go 10 th- better games than that. So I, I was going to go for three, verify. and then I thought, no, the world will just vote it down because they remember it being disliked. They were um, told not to like that one, so they're not yeah. allowed to. Uh, Civilization 6, because that steals a lot of time for people. And I think we all secretly have an addiction to that. Um, people thought five was better. Do you know? I sat there looking at but the logos six was on, on my the laptop Switch and uh, <laughs> consoles, so that automatically made it better. I looked at the logos on my laptop for which one did I play more, and I was just—I should have looked on Steam. To be fair, I just guessed and thought I played six more. But you're probably right. And I also wasn't sure if, uh, when each came out. Um, where was I? I put Mario Maker 2 because we said that was the best game of the generation like three months ago and we'd look like fools if we didn't put it in our uh, list of the decade. Let's see. Um, I put Injustice Gods Among Us because that was one of the few times that I feel like a game and a comic series worked side by side and were absolutely amazing. Injustice you watched this one game. on YouTube. Or was that no, me? you watched it on YouTube. I know somebody watched this on YouTube. I played it. And it was a fantastic story. Oh, no, it was Portal story. 2 you watched on YouTube. I remember um, now. I watched one scene of that. Um, and the comic the last one? alongside it was one of the best comic stories. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like that deserves a lot of uh, uh, you know praise. Um, I know it won't win, but I thought it was definitely outstanding. Um, Red Dead Redemption, the first one, because I've not really gone very far with the second one. Um, and I feel like... No matter how good the second one is, it wouldn't be as good without the first one being there, and that took over the world when that came was out. Was that this decade? That feels it was. Like so yeah, long 2010. ago. Yeah, 2010. Was it 2010? Uh, yeah. yeah, it was. Uh, and plus, that was one of the few times early on when we first started as a community that we were getting everyone on it, and we were all playing together. Oh, I guess it was, it was yeah. It was yeah. It was during the life of the podcast, so it must have been. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I'll allow um, it. <laughs> uh, South Park Stick of Truth, because tv slash film to to video game stuff never works and that was outstanding it was like a full-on massive episode of south park absolutely loved it um considered doing the fractured one instead but i thought no stick of truth was brilliant it's worth putting in i think it was my game of the year the year it came out um and it's worth it um detroit become human because that was fantastic i really really loved that (laughs) It's one of the few ones I've wanted to play again. I almost put Beyond Two Souls instead, but I put that down. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nothing, carry on. And, Are uh, you laughing at him putting these games in? Oh, that, that decision of which one to put over than of the, the two, that just made me chuckle. Mm-hmm. What was the man who about? nominated Fortnite's laughing at someone else's choices. <laughs> yeah. And um, the last one we were debating before the show whether it even counted, and I feel like this should be your vote more than my vote, but I definitely feel like it's an outstanding game of the decade is Minecraft because it is insanely good. Um, I know it makes me feel sick, but my son put so many hours into it. You put so many hours into it. I enjoy it from afar when it, when it doesn't make me ill, and I just think it would be mental. For See, I didn't have this on four. my list because when I Googled it, the internet told me it came out in 2009, but you two have convinced me that it was actually 2011. It was definitely... Yeah, yeah, on, definitely. Uh, my wife's Professor birthday, Miller. I think. It, so I've had to add reading. it onto my list, which, I mean, I'll let everyone know what went, what, what missed out because Sheepdog changed the date Minecraft was released. But it's interesting, very interesting that the internet's changed its mind when that game came out in the space <laughs> of two weeks between me making my list and you making yours. Um, so Sheepdog's list, just to run through that again quickly: Fez, uh, Pokemon Go. Uh, Mass Effect 2, Civilization 6, Super Mario Maker 2, Injustice, Gods Among Us, Red Dead Redemption, South Park, Stick Off Truth, Detroit Become Human, and Mint's Raft. Um, Anna, mm. have you got your top 10 for us? Your 10 best games of the decade. How many times do I have to write Fallout? This is where I wanted to no. get a copy of the really. So, in no particular order, what happened to Edith Finch? Mm. Okay. Love that game, it was great. Yep. Uh, the Walking Dead season one. Got to specify the season. Yeah. Uh, Animal Crossing New Leaf. Okay. What was that on? DS. 3DS. Okay. <laughs> I probably played it, but I don't. You remember did, what it was on. but you 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 would send yourself a letter each year. 
oh of course would. whenever I was on the train on the way home from EGX I'd send myself a letter to open on the train home from EGX the next year um, oh my word does street pass count as a game that changes everything yeah. oh oh no um, Anna carry on Fallout New Vegas I think you're going to leave off something that um, you shouldn't and I'm, I'm intrigued uh, going. Borderlands 2 uh, the new God of War the Last of Us, The Witcher Two, Red Dead Two. Two, yeah, because I, that was the first one I played. Okay, I, like I played Red it, Dead I two, didn't did like say? it. I'm not complaining. Yeah. I like The Witcher Two quite a lot as well. Because I got it, because Kevin got it for me. I played it and I didn't really like it. And then about a year later, I went back to it and just played it all the way through and loved everything about it. I didn't understand yeah. the game when I first played it. Um, so yeah, The Witcher Two. Uh, Red Dead Redemption 2 and Detroit as well. Interesting. So you're really going to do Gears of War 3 like that when you completed that, what, three yeah. times over? Like, yeah, but... It's like you hit the cap on that so many times. There's been more better games. And... Not that you've played as much, surely. But playing lots doesn't necessarily put it in the top ten because people are going to think I'm mad for not including any football manager games in my 10. Mm. If it was based on how many <laughs> games you played the most, my top 10 would be the 10 football manager uh. games that have been released this decade because I've played them more than anything. But I'm not nominating any of them because, A, you can't really tell them apart. But so Gears 3 it's... was like the first six months of your entire relationship. <laughs> that's That's how you introduced me to Anna. We played that until what? five in the morning birds were tweeting outside <laughs> we were playing funny. that so late i think that's the last yeah, I th- time i did an all-nighter. i think if 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 you if you if anna was told she was only allowed to play one game for the rest of her life and it had to be gears of war 3 or what became of edith finch we know which one you'd go for really but uh, you like i said it's right i'm no, gonna, it's fine i've got t- my, shot, my top 10 has some stuff on there it's probably not my 10 favorite games of the decade but i think it's 10 games that represents the decade really well um, so I, in your I'm opinion, awkward. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I think it does. I think if you if you were travelling back from the future and you wanted to play ten games to get a feel of what this last decade was like, you play the ten on my list. But why would it have to? And be I think that will give you a good feel because that's the. Ba- I'm telling you the basis I've picked my list on. <laughs> so, for example, number one on my list is Heavy Rain, and Detroit's not on my list because mm-hmm. although Detroit was a better game than Heavy Rain, Heavy Rain to me exposed me to an entirely new genre that absolutely blew my mind and there's very i can't think of another game that i've sat there and played to completion in one night the way i did with heavy rain in one it was night so mind-blowingly good yeah yeah i just God. it absolutely blew me away how good it was um and then i went back and played it again and did things differently and i never do that with games so although both beyond two souls and detroit were better games than heavy rain I can't, in good conscience, not have Heavy Rain on this list. I'd and have because probably agreed I with want you. Time I just travelers. haven't played that one. It yeah, and be- because I want yeah. time travellers to get a good feel of the decade from my list, I can't have Heavy Rain and Detroit on the list. That's madness. That wastes a pick. So Heavy Rain gets the nod. Um, so Heavy Rain is number one on my list. Um, Skyrim, of course, has to be oh, on the Heavy list. Heavy Rain was not out this decade. It was February 2010. Uh, okay, that's why. Um, Skyrim, because I think that's probably the console game I've played more than any other. Love a bit of rimming, and to the point where the only way Anna's going to convince me to get that VR thing on is the opportunity to do rimming in virtual reality. You said you wanted to play um, everyone's which, golf as well. Yeah, everybody's golf looks fun as well, but that's not that's definitely not on my list. Um, mm-hmm. Portal Two, because to this day it's still the greatest multiplayer experience anyone can have in video games, and you can't prove me wrong. Um, the the two player co op Portal Two campaign is just perfect gaming. It is the perfect video game experience. Um, season one of The Walking Dead because it was it's the closest <laughs> gaming's ever got to making me cry. I did nearly <laughs> cry at the end of that, which is not me at all. Oh, no, Kev Kev's don't cry, but Walking Dead nearly got me. I was in the dining room um, and I finished it two minutes before you did. Fair enough. Yep. I, don't, I, I remember being in the dining yeah. room. I don't remember which order we finished in. Um, Diablo 3, because I don't think there's any other game I've bought on so many different consoles. And I finally finished it in the last year um, <laughs> on the Switch. 
so I can now finally judge it properly. But I've bought it so many times because I love it so much. Um, and again, great multiplayer fun. Journey, because bad to ask where that was. Journey's there for the same reason as um, as the likes of Heavy Rain and The Walking Dead, because the ending to it was the most perfect end to a video game ever. And I still, to this day, don't know if it was just a coincidence for my ending or if that's how it ends for everybody. But again, the the whole co-op element of it, the not knowing who you were playing with and having to make friends along the way and not being able to communicate with them and the way it ends is... Mm. It's art don't ever make that form. noise again. That... <laughs> have to when I talk about Journey. I always do. Um, the Last of Us, because it was just brilliant. Um, Pokemon Go, because Nottingham Castle. The thing that I will always... You know, just... <laughs> Wow. Just the just the fact that I, I will always refer back to it whenever I talk about these kind of games. And people know the story, but the fact it was Gone Midnight after MGPX that year. Gone Midnight, we're just at a random castle in a random city. And there's people all around us who are out playing this game. And I had conversations with strangers that night. <laughs> and I've not done that before or since. Kevin doesn't so Pokemon Go, Pokemon Go made me a human. Um, mm-hmm. Minecraft, because it's brilliant. And should just win the whole thing because obviously it is the best game of the decade. No, it's not. Um, because it just took over the world. I mean, it's a. If I think if you asked everybody on Earth to cast a vote, Minecraft would probably win because it's the one they'll have heard of. Um, and Civilization VI is my last one, which I'd forgotten about until Sheepdog mentioned it. So I had to cross <laughs> out Super Mario Odyssey and put Civilization VI on. Ooh, Mario Odyssey was on my other. So, yeah, I, go, thinking about your list there, I knew you'd have Journey. I kind of thought about putting it. Because you, you got me to come around your house and play that specifically. Yeah, because <laughs> it was so good. It was so amazing. Wow. Um, and it was. I sat was over brilliant. him while he played it. Why? And the only other time you've ever called me around your house to play a game is when you wanted to show me you could look up that girl's skirt <laughs> in that uh, zombie game. Lollipop Chainsaw. Or yeah. Chainsaw Lollipop, or whatever it was called. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was funny. So, yeah. My 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 I'm surprised list was like Mario Odyssey was going to be on my list and I didn't put it on there. Um, and GTA Five, I'm surprised none of us really mentioned. GTA Five was... is the one I crossed out to put Minecraft on, so yeah. it was on my list until we decided Minecraft was allowed, and then I crossed out GTA. I 5. did have uh, GTA Four because I I liked that more than I played Five. But I didn't know what year it came out, so I crossed it off. The only other two that I was having on was uh, Sonic Mania because it's the first time someone's done a good Sonic game in over a decade and um, Arkham Knight, which I know you all hated because I just thought it was fantastic. I didn't hate it, it, I just didn't like the Kong. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, sorry, I didn't mean you hated it, but um, I wondered whether any of the Arkham games would be on your lists because they were quite big, weren't they? I did have the first one, but then I remembered Animal Crossing. It was 09. Oh, was it? It was also 09. Was it really? Arkham Asylum was 09. Wow. I, I've got Arkham, I've got Arkham Asylum down here and I checked in. It is 09. I went, well, that's off. <laughs> <laughs> right, I am having a first little look through the lists. And there, I think there's two games that have been nominated by three of us, which is Walking Detroit Dead, and The Walking Dead. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I'm surprised with Walking Dead because um, God, did the Last of Us not get more votes? It was so on the rails. It they it painted two. that to be this whole big. Oh, oh no, player, the Last of Us got want. three as well. Oh, okay. So Detroit, The Walking Dead, and Last of Us, all three of them got three votes. God, so we're debating over the final spot. <laughs> well, not necessarily. Um, let's <clears> get <throat> those three on an initial short list. So Detroit, Last of Us, Walking Dead. Um, of the games that got nominated twice, which can go on a potentially on a preliminary list as well. Um, oh, actually, no, true. Detroit was only nominated by two people oh. because I said Heavy Rain. So mm-hmm. hold on. Last of Us and Walking Dead are in for now. Um, and then the ones that got two votes were Detroit. Um, what else got two votes? Looking for Civilization VI, Minecraft, um, Pokemon Go. Yeah, Pokemon Go, or whatever we said it was called. Civilization. Go. Civilization Six. God of War got two votes. Um, what else? I think that might be it for the ones that got... I can't believe no one else nominated Skyrim, you cultureless buffoons. Um, I so couldn't play it because I always got encumbered. <laughs> uh, which are, oh, no, which, which are three and which are two both got one vote each, so mm-hmm. that rules both of them out. 
Um, so what? So this. So we've got Pokemon Go. We've got God of War. We've got. Did someone say Red Dead Two? Yeah, me. Red, oh no, we got a Red Dead and a Red Dead Two, but not at the same time. Um, so Pokemon Go, God of War. What else did I say? <laughs> Civilization. Civ Six, Minecraft. Detroit. Detroit. Yeah. Okay, so we have got a top seven there as a group. Are we I'm... happy? So the top seven is The Last of Us, The Walking Dead, Pokemon Go, God of War, Civilization Six, Minecraft, and Detroit. I, think I am happy. I am happy to withdraw my vote for Civilization Six and throw it behind Detroit to get Detroit onto this final thing. If time travelers are coming back, the only two they wouldn't think were worthy of that list would be The Walking Dead and Detroit, in my opinion. The Walking Dead was me. superb. It was trash. Was oh, Detroit. no, it wasn't. It really was. No, it they was. claimed it was this choose your own adventure, any vein will do, you know, everyone gets their own story, like Detroit. And it was literally, no matter what you did, you got to the same turd ending where it was like... That's oh, like God. saying uh, magicians are trash because they're not actually doing magic. It gave the illusion of choice and got us all confused. No, it lied in and stories. I resented it for it. And it wasn't that great a story. <laughs> you kept going, oh, you'll cry at the end. And I was really unimpressed. Well, luckily, that either. one got voted for by the three of us, so that yeah. one is not up for debate. It doesn't deserve to be there. <laughs> well, it's there. It's not a game of the decade. Well, it's there. So no, 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 no. It's there yeah. with The Last of Us. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm happy to throw my weight behind Detroit um, because of the five Pokemon Go, God of War, Civ Six, Minecraft, Detroit. To me, Detroit is clearly. The best of those five. Are you but kidding that's me? Insane because Minecraft and Pokemon Go are the only two that have changed the world in this decade. <laughs> They're the only two that should be in any final on that entire list. Hmm. I'd have said Minecraft as well. To be fair, Anna. What? What are you thinking? I I don't know. I don't. What you don't have an opinion. I don't know what the opinion I'm supposed to be having. Well, your opinion. I wasn't what listening. What about what? Pokemon Go, God of War, Civ Six, Minecraft, or Detroit? God of War. She voted for the first time. Uh, <laughs> it was excellent. God of War. God of War. I would put on before Last of Us. That's how much I feel like the the, the game is better. I the, feel like God I know, of I know War Last isn't of doesn't stand a chance though because Sheepdogs no. not played it and I didn't like it. So no, it's no, I know, at most going to gonna get two votes from us. Yeah, yeah. We can almost rule God of War out. Mm-hmm. And on that basis, we can probably rule Civilization out as well, because neither you or Anna are going to vote for that, are you? No, it's boring. Nope. Yeah, get rid of them. So we can kill God of War and Civilization six straight away, which means we've got to pick two from the three that are Pokemon Go, Minecraft, and Detroit. But you can't suggest that that Walking Dead game is better than Minecraft or Pokemon Go. That's insane. <laughs> Oh, it is. I would. I mean, if I was picking two from those three, I'd go Minecraft and Detroit. Pokemon Go was fun, but I you play that every I'd, summer. Yeah, I play. I I will still play it every summer. But every time I'm playing it, I will wonder if I'm actually playing a game or if I'm just enjoying a bit of collecting. That's like saying, "Well, I like the World Cup stickers." That's a good game too. That would be like Charlie Brooker saying Twitter wins because Twitter's a game. You know, it's Pokemon Go. What are you actually playing a game or are you just going through a routine of collecting something? What's the game in Pokemon Go? Well, there's a lot more fighting in it now, isn't there? Mm. They added in all the Team Rocket stuff, all the um, player v player, the leagues. They've added in a friend thing now where you, you, you walk around with your little buddy. Yeah, well, I saw that the other day. Yeah, I was pointless. like, what is that happening? That was good. Right, let's let's try something. Okay, let's each of us put the three of them in order, and see if and see if that gets us to some kind of consensus. So it will be like three points for first, two points for second, one point for third. So if we start with Pab again, put the okay. three of them in order: Pokemon Go, Minecraft, and Detroit. 
Oh, goodness. Uh, Minecraft would be first. So three right. points would be for that one. Yeah. Uh, Pokemon Go, and then Detroit. Okay. Sheepdog? Uh, Pokemon Detroit, Minecraft. Pokemon Detroit, Minecraft. Only Anna. because Minecraft makes me sick. Um, <laughs> Detroit, Pokemon, Minecraft. Detroit, Pokemon, Minecraft, and I would go Detroit, Minecraft, Pokemon, which gives Pokemon eight points and Minecraft seven points and Detroit nine points, <laughs> which eliminates Minecraft, which would give us a final four of Last of Us, Walking Dead, Pokemon Go and Detroit. Oh really? But we were trying to go for four, uh, two then, were we? Okay. Yeah. yeah but as Pab says, it is bonkers that Minecraft's not in the final four. The fact that this game has, uh, this for this generation, that game has defined this generation. Well, let's the get amount of games that spawned off it. <laughs> but Walking Dead kind of kicked wasn't off. It. It. That was one part of a series that was one big game that was rubbish. It was it all on the rubbish. rails. It was all rubbish graphics. It was really lame story. It, it wasn't an original movie. Right. Hold on. Are, we, are we really criticising graphics, Mr. Pokemon yeah. Go and Minecraft? My Pokemon word. Pokemon Go is the optimum version of <laughs> its game. But its graphics are turd. And it's not a game. No, but The Walking Dead was yeah, a very and as Pab poor says, story. It's not a game. It's a collecting thing. It's a, it it's is a, a game. It, it's Fitbit with better achievements. It's the lifeblood yeah. of the Pokemon series, like perfectly distilled into a game. Apart from it takes the game out of it. No, it's got loads of game into it. They just add to it constantly. It's constantly being developed. Because mm. Minecraft is done. Well, Minecraft, you could... Uh, I mean, that's it's, still being constantly developed. Constantly that, that, that has its annual stuff, updates yeah. come out, doesn't it? So it's got the... We're getting bees, Sheepdog, in Minecraft. Bees. Nice. Got bees and Pokemon. Yeah, but we're getting That's them in Minecraft. Bees. Can you imagine it? Bees and honey. What a world. What was the other I... one other than the Walking Dead? Last of Last Us. Last of Us. I I do wonder if having Last of Us, Walking Dead and Detroit, those three all in there, they're all quite they're similar all story driven story, games. Yeah. So yep. do we need all three of them? Do we go? But I, then, I, but then I, but then I would rather see Detroit there than The Walking Dead. I, if I had to pick a final four from these five, I'd go Last of Us, Pokemon Go, Minecraft, and Detroit. Based on the discussion we've had, so that would, would be I. my four. Yeah, I, I, I would do that. I wouldn't. I wouldn't put Detroit in there anywhere near it. So, what would you have as your fourth? Um, Walking Dead. Walking Dead. I would say Walking. At the impact that that, that first season. Had is like nothing else. I mean, it did kind of create a genre yeah, or became, bring back became, a genre. Anyway, it, it became a thing of like, have you played this this episode of The Walking Dead? And you'd have a conversation for about twenty twenty five minutes on what you did mm. and the whole. It was like it was like like serialized TV, but in a, in a game, which had never really been done before. You might have convinced me to go back based on cultural impact, Pab. That, that's because what I that's, that's what I'm going basing these on though cultural impact of Minecraft and The Walking Dead. If you take Walking Dead season one in a vacuum and forget about what came next with Telltale and this series as a whole, then it was pretty. I'll close give you to that. It perfect. did have a big impact on everyone's like. So out of those five, I would say everyone was buzzing about Last of Us. Everyone was buzzing about The Walking Dead. Everyone's been buzzing about Minecraft since it came out, and everyone was buzzing about Pokemon. Only gamers were buzzing about Detroit. That does seem like a sensible methodology. I know we are at gamers, but you get where I'm coming from. I mentioned Detroit at work, and everyone was like, oh, about. I mentioned it with my Pokemon yeah. buddies, no one knew. I mentioned it with my mates in Essex, none of them knew what I was on about. Um, you guys and our listeners are the only people I know who played Detroit, and that seems mad because it's a genuinely amazing story uh, so are we Anna are you listening to this bit I am <laughs> are we all happy to commit to a final four of The Last of Us The Walking Dead Pokemon Go and Minecraft yes sure I am 
<laughs> so that is our final four. So that's the four that's going to go up to the public vote on the Twitter. Um, and you lot can fight amongst yourselves in the comments to that post and threaten each other with whatever you want to threaten each other with. But the work is not done for the four of us because we now need to take that four and decide on a winner. Oh. Of those four, which was the best game of the decade? Mm. I mean, I'm looking at that list. I think... I feel, I feel like my brain is broken because <laughs> I'm leaning towards Minecraft now, even though that wasn't the one I gave three points to a few minutes ago. And to be fair, I gave my points to It wasn't on your list an hour ago. <coughs> I know. I know, but then it was the only reason it wasn't on my short list of ten originally is because I thought it was out the previous and, decade. To be fair, you want to be this one to even been a thing a year ago. Not so, sir. When it first I, came out on Xbox 360, we played it constantly on the old forum that was the precursor to this podcast. They years did. Ago. I remember when our yeah. forum started. We they yeah, were playing it, it. They absolutely it. dominated the world for a good six months. Oh, or so. it was our online it game of choice. But yeah, and then it's no, I kind it was a small of village in my honour, I believe. Probably, and then I drifted away from it for a few years. But then we started playing it as a family, and we didn't necessarily talk about it a lot on the podcast. But mm. there was a good probably year or so there where we would all be sat around there on our devices making theme parks and roller coasters and water parks and just prattling around in creative mode, just having a lot of fun because the kids were all exactly the right age for it. And then obviously in the last year or so, it's come back with bells on and I still play it fairly regularly now. Having started playing it over the summer, I'm still dipping into it at least a couple of times a week, which is unheard of for me in a game that's not Football Manager. So, I think of those four, Minecraft, Minecraft's had three waves of awesome in my world oh, without yeah. having to release sequels. Yeah, but every update is a sequel, isn't it? I don't know. Because it's just That's, new stuff yeah. like Bedrock and Java. It's like and... content update, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, it's constantly adding new content. But He's never had to buy not, it again, yeah. other than the many well, times he's bought I've it. I've probably bought you... it about 30 times on yeah, different devices. Yeah, but I mean, it's always the same version. You've not had to buy it again because your version was obsolete. <laughs> yeah. Whereas, I mean, The Walking Dead, I know we're trying to view season <clears> one in a vacuum, but I've never actually finished the full story of The Walking Dead Telltale because I got bored. So yeah. I don't think I don't think I finished season two. And I, I know there was the Michonne bit, bit, there was earlier. season three. Um, but oh. like I think it's probably yeah. I, I I only remember the negatives about it. Uh, well, I only remembered the negatives about it. But hearing you talk about it, I'm kind of remembering when it was the buzz. Um, but I'd still because it was so new and so different. But then mm. so was Minecraft. So was Pokemon Go. I mean, The Last of Us is the only one that's on here on the basis of it being yeah. arguably the best video game of the last 10 years. Uh, that's, because that's it seems to have a gimmick. Yeah, wouldn't it? This is where I sit with it. The, the, and, like, <clears throat> sorry, Minecraft is something that changed. Like I say, it defined a generation for me, Minecraft. It, it, it spawned every. The survival games, it's about like spawned builders. It spawned pretty much the entire generation. But The Last of Us was just just something. It was almost perfect. Mm. Do you know the Last of Us is here is? with no bells, no whistles, no gimmicks, no cultural takeover. We've all said it because it was such a good game. You say that, but this is part. So I can justify <laughs> it against all of them, really, um, for me. And Last of Us, I would say they just took the plot of a film and actors and actresses from a film and made it into a game that you, they let you marginally walk around. It was still out, an outstanding story, but that is just a film that they've turned into a game. Instead. You don't get many. 12 hour long film so do you yeah but if you took out with giraffes the, I'm allowed you, to talk about the giraffe yeah, now yeah, yeah. aren't I years on and the and, giraffe and, and, was and one I'm of not... my that was one of my favourite moments in gaming ever when that giraffe stuck his head over that balcony or through <laughs> that window wherever he was and I I popped big style it was like the rock turning up on an episode of Raw unannounced I was so <laughs> excited when that giraffe appeared yeah, someone playing devil's advocate if, 
if you weren't trying to if you didn't have to walk between a and b and figure stuff out and that was just the story if you're watching that on youtube it probably wouldn't be 12 hours long would it it'd probably be like i don't that's know part it, of it. That's i would show, that's i wouldn't have it. watched it as a tv show i don't think you probably would have back then you watch tv back then. i would then. i watch tv now we've just finished season two of you it was very good <laughs> i don't um, have a program Shut your face, shoot down. Um, <laughs> um, I do watch TV when it's awesome, and I don't think this would have been as effective in any other medium. I don't think it would have made as good a movie, or I said have made that movie by now. I don't I think, think it would have been as good as a TV show. Say, everyone was billing it as like the Ben Hur of gaming, and I think it was. It, I, I would say it's probably still the high point. Am I talking myself into saying The Last of Us? Yeah. I don't know. I, like I say, I've, I, the only reason I'm doubting myself is because The Last of Us. And most Naughty Dog games control horrendously. And I hated that game for the first hour or so. And I forced myself to play it because it, the story grabbed me. And the story forced me to keep playing it and playing it. And by the end of it, I didn't want to put it down. It, it is like Right, this. so we've got two games here that are story, two games that are cultural phenomenons. Which of the two story games had the better story, The Walking Dead or The Last of Us? Last of Us. Um... I would probably go with Last of Us as well. Anna? Um, Anna. There she is. I don't know. Um... So difficult. So difficult. you got to think The Walking Dead, and I'm, again, negatives on that, it, it was borrowing from the Kirkman series. Um, it was very clunky. And They were both so clunky. So was, yeah, so they was. Were... The Last they, of Us. It was yeah. clunkier than Last of Us. Last of Us was clunky for different reasons. It was complicated. The Walking Dead was clunky when it was meant to be just a point and click type thing. You just wandered to find the batteries and then you put them in the radio and then, you know. <laughs> it did have a decent story. I just didn't cry and I was a bit miffed that none of my choices mattered. But it did have a decent story. Do you want to yeah. do a... I guess The Last so, of Us. Just because there was more story. And... So we, it feels like we're kind of eliminating The Walking Dead. If we're, if we're saying they're both story games and we all agree The Last of Us was the better story of the two, what part of The Walking Dead made it better than The Last of Us if it wasn't a better story? Was it just ending? the fact it was episodic, episodic or yeah, just the ending or just the... The fact that you could play mm. The Last of Us at leisure, whereas with The Walking Dead, you'd have to wait. You weren't quite sure when it was coming out. Then that got a bit jarring. So... See, mm, yeah. I think I'm torn between Last of Us and Minecraft for my vote. My argument for yeah. what's talking me out of Minecraft a little bit, beyond the feeling ill bit, because I was thinking about what you were saying about making the roller coasters and that, and I had a lot of fun doing that. Um, showing the, you know, the kids going to bed and then coming down the next day and me showing them what me and Claire had spent the night building. Um, she went to bed dreaming about Minecraft because we played it so much <laughs> for those few weeks we were doing it. Um, but then I kind of think to myself, all Knots really did was think, I could just put Lego in a computer. Didn't he really? Nobody else he did it, of it. He did he? it better than Lego did when Lego tried to, though. Well, they'd done it before Lego tried to. Didn't they? And Lego World is actually pretty decent. We were playing yeah, it the other day. It's no on, Minecraft, uh... is it? Oh, I hate Lego. Yeah, but World. Minecraft already exists now. That's a bit like the the Harry Potter Wizards Unite and the Minecraft Earth thing, trying to get in on Pokemon Go's thing. If you get there first and you do a decent enough job, you're kind of set, aren't you? So, isn't that points on the board for Minecraft then? Well, not really, because I'm saying it's just Lego. That's what, that's my point. Is it's Lego in in the internet? But Pokemon Go's just Fitbit. And it's not though, is that, it? That game that came before it. It's catching them and fighting them. It's the it's the Pokemon series in the real world. I would say ninety percent of the people who are aware Pokemon exists would not be aware that you can fight in it. Or Pokemon Go. Yeah. Because mm. that summer when everyone was playing it before it became a little niche title for nerds, you couldn't fight in it. So I'm kind of, in my mind when I think Pokemon Go, I'm thinking that Pokemon Go that we played that summer, it came out, 
not whatever it's turned into since because I haven't even really kept up with what they've done on it recently. I'm vaguely aware of what they did in the summer. And even then, you didn't have to do the battling stuff. I've still that's never the same done. Same with Minecraft. You didn't know they were adding things in it till you add till you dip back into it. You'll dip back into this in the summer, and you'll see. Oh, I've got to walk my buddy now and play with it, and take pictures of it, and battle with it, and stuff like that. And none of that is screaming best game of the generation at me. Mm, yeah, but it's been what twenty sixteen. It came out, and it's absolutely smashed it since. If it has it, I it don't really think it has. has. It's still making a bloody fortune yeah, but, it's only, but the amount of people that played it that summer or whatever it is it i i almost guarantee that there's less than 50 percent of them people still playing no it, it reached its peak uh max you know most users last the summer just gone that just feels like a marketing agency manipulating figures in a weird way because there's just no way that's true it reached its peak that summer when everyone was playing it well unless they're saying it was the highest that's been other than when it first came out, which might yeah, there's might no be way there has been a period since that first month where as many people have been playing it as were playing it in that first month. You could not move for Pokemon Go players that summer, and it's never been a time since then where it's been like that. Yep. I I Just think looking. I don't think we're going to agree on a four on a on a winner. I think we need to we need to try voting again. <laughs> um, so I guess I don't know. Are we? Are we? <laughs> I'm trying trying to find a way to allow Minecraft to win. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, <laughs> don't want, I don't want Anna to give four points to The Last of Us, three points to Walking Dead. Um, I want to rule Walking Dead out because we're it saying Last of Us is better. In the previous round, yeah, I agree. You want to do that? Are we? Are we saying Walking Dead is fourth, and we're now putting the other three in order? I'm saying it shouldn't have been in the top four. Okay. Uh, we, that, that discussion's <laughs> been a gun, Sheep Dog. Yeah, I know, mate. I mean, are, we all, are we all I'm agreed playing. that we're putting Last of Us, Pokemon Go, and Minecraft in order as a top three? Not in that order, but yeah. Well, no, uh, we're putting them in an order. <laughs> yes. Anna, are we agreed? If you want. Right. We'll go the same order as you did before then. Pab, Last of Us, Pokemon Go, and Minecraft, give us your order. Um, the Last of Us, what, it's Minecraft, one. yes, yeah, and then okay. Minecraft, and then Pokemon Go. Sheepdog, did I go to you last time? No, I went to Anna next, didn't I? Last time, um, Anna, give us them in your your three. In I order. think you went to me last time. Oh, did I did. Go, go on, then, Sheepdog. You can go. You can go then. Well, I feel like you're just. Uh, I don't know. Um, I've got my order. Do you want me to go next? Do you, refra- do you want to be tactical? No, no, I no. Do... I don't want to be tactical. I'll go. I can't even think. What, what are the options? Pokemon, uh, Minecraft, Pokemon and, Minecraft Last and Last of Us. Uh, mm, that's hard. Pokemon, Last of Us, Minecraft. Anna? Last of Us, <clears throat> Pokemon, Minecraft. And I'm going Minecraft. Last of Us, Pokemon, even though tactically I should have gone Pokemon then Last of Us um, because I think Last of Us has won so Last of Us has 10 points Pokemon has 7 and Minecraft has 7 so Last of Us was going to win either way The Last of Us is the best game of the decade officially Well Which done. I think I, I think I think anyone would struggle to put a really strong argument to say that's not the case. If you had I mean, if you had a gun to people's heads, they'd put like say, name the best game you could think of instantly, and they, and it, I don't know they had to try and really pick one. I think Last of Us would be definitely. And again, I think answer. if you were if you were taking Johnny Time Traveler, plucking him out of space and time, and plopping him down in the, this evening in our living room. And he doesn't know anything about cultural impact or what got most views on YouTube or what got the most buzz at the time. And he just played the four of these, gave each of them two hours. I think he'd probably say The Last of Us was the better of the four. Wording that slightly different and in the real world, if I was to give my daughter my PlayStation, it has to be PlayStation really, doesn't it, to play it. But um, he said to her, these are the games I think you'd really like that were brilliant. She'd, she's already aware of Minecraft and pokemon go because they were cultural phenomenons and but they're also for a different audience sorry 
They're for a different audience. People. Yeah, she's played them. They're a 18. bit like playing cards. Let's have a game of solitaire while we're sat around a table. Whereas if I said to her, have a crack at this story, she'd, I, I, I'd guarantee she'd enjoy it and she'd remember it forever, even though probably because mm. absolutely horrify her. But um, yeah, there's not many games. Like, off the top of my head, that Minecraft, that Red Dead and um, Spider-Man seemed like the three I'd want to get her to play. Although Red Dead, she's too young for. She'd be too young for all of them, I think. Um, yeah. But when she's old enough, those three would be well worth her playing, um, which is probably, again, another way of looking at it from, instead of it being time travellers. But... Uh, yeah, I well, think we've. I feel like we've done a good winner there. It's probably the obvious has, winner. Yeah, The Last of Us is the best game of the decade. Um, Sheepdog will get the certificate sorted to send to Naughty Dog, so they can stick it on their wall because I think it needs do- needs mm-hmm. doing. So Sheepdog will draw that tomorrow with his crayons and then scan it in and email it to them. Won't Sheepdog? <laughs> Um, if um, you, of course, disagree with the voting, I'm not giving you the chance to say you're not going to do that. Um, if you disagree with the voting, um, get down to MG UK Podcast on Twitter where you can vote for those top four. Feel free to comment with all the ways we're wrong with what our final four was. But just remember, we weren't wrong. You're wrong. These were the best four. Um, and you're just voting on which one, which of the ones is the best. That's, that's just how it is. Um, but get your votes in on there. And, uh, yeah, if we're really desperately wrong then you can always try again in 10 years' time when we're doing the best game of the next decade. I think that's reasonable. In 90 years' time, when we do the best game of the century, it'll be cracking. Uh, we'll, all, we'll all be long dead by then. You might be. Long I'll be a cyborg. Dead. Long dead. Um, and why would we be doing it in 90 years, anyway? Um, do you know how long a century is? <laughs> Hang on a minute, 80 years, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's because we've been talking about 2010 so anyway, all night. <laughs> um, follow us on Twitter at MGUK Podcast. You can follow me at Lelujo. And I'm at RB6K. I'm at Miss Lelujo. And I'm at Pub1986. And don't forget to make sure you come back next week where we have the best show of the year, the Google Zeitgeist Review of the Year show. I think it'll be the first one that'll ever come out in January, but we're still <laughs> we reviewing this year, coats. not next year. Yeah, exactly. See you next week, boys and girls. Have a good week. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening, folks. You're welcome. <laughs>